Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to a game of Civilization VI, where we're going to be playing a Sejong. We've got ourselves a fairly interesting start location, and if you want to play the save file, it should be linked in my Discord under the save file channel. Now, I am super excited to bring you guys Sejong today because Sejong is super powerful, namely because of the Hangul ability, which gives you double your science per turn as culture when you research a technology from a new era. That is going to be a very fun ability to play around with. Let's take a look at our starting location. We have started in a relatively fertile area. There's a ton of hills, there's a ton of grassland, and I can immediately see three to four interesting locations for us to settle. Let's talk about settling on this sugar. And we'll talk about why we might consider settling on that sugar. If we were to step one tile to the bottom left, we would get a city center that would be making four food per turn, which would allow me to grow my city very, very quickly. Additionally, there are two food one production tiles. There's a two food two production tile down here, which I could get access to. And I would also get fairly early access to these two marble tiles, which would be very handy. Now, alternatively, I could step one two tiles, turns, and then settle on turn three on this marble or turn three on the cocoa. I think these two are also totally valid choices. And then the final place that I would maybe consider settling is either in place or adjacent to some of these luxuries. So somewhere inside this triangle. My immediate thought is to settle on the sugar. Let's have a look at the lens map mode. There's nothing here. The reason that I'm liking settling on the sugar is that I have two two tiles here and a 2-2 two -two tile here, and the sugar itself, I'll get a luxury, I'll get extra food. Yeah, for all of those reasons, I'm going to go ahead and settle on the sugar. I think it's the best long-term decision that I can make based on the information that I have available to me. I moved my warrior, I got my scouting information. We'll go ahead and settle the city immediately on here. That deletes the marsh that was on this tile. However, we now have a city center that's producing four food per turn. That means we're going to grow to our next population much faster. So we're going to have a really strong growth curve in our capital city this game. We might want to consider what that means for us. Well, what it really means is we're going to get a little bit of extra science, a little bit of extra culture, and we're going to be able to place down more districts than we would normally be able to. We also need to talk about the rest of Korea's abilities. Namely, Korea's two biggest abilities are the Three Kingdoms and the Seowon, and the way that those two abilities interact. Let's talk about the Seowon first. This is a unique campus district that gives you plus four adjacency. What that means is it will just naturally produce plus four adjacency. And if I go ahead and plug in the card that you get at Recorded History here, Natural Philosophy, I will get plus eight total science for my Seowon. However, that science is reduced if I build more districts adjacent to it. The Seowon also must be built on hills. And then the extra little bonus that you get is that mines get plus one science for every adjacent Seowon district and farms receive plus one food for every adjacent Seowon district. So we definitely want to consider where we want to place our Seowans, and we especially want to consider where our hills are. So let's go ahead and do a little search for hills, and you can see there are a lot of really interesting locations that we could build our Seowan. I'm seeing immediately in my capital that there's a location right here that has four adjacent farms, or sorry, four adjacent mines. This is actually like a 12, yeah, this is like a 12 science Say a one right here, which is super valuable. That one is very obvious to me. So most of our empire planning is about where we're going to place our say a ones and then how we're going to fit the rest of our districts in. I may move this one tile to the northwest to be able to be able to place some districts over here a little bit more clearly. But I think the obvious thing for us to do in our opening turns is to go for two scouts. Two scouts is what I consider to be the, op the, the standard opening build order. We're going to want mining. We're going to want pottery, although I think we'll go for pottery first. The reason we want pottery is so that we can get to writing. We want writing so we can get the say a one. Unfortunately, we don't have a floodplain in our capital, so we can't justify going for the Edamananki. It would be a really good wonder to pick up if we had the floodplains because it gives you the plus two science, and, or sorry, plus one science and plus one production to all floodplains in this city, as well as just a plus two science boost. We may want to consider going for the great library. Anything that produces science is something that we want to consider with this sieve because we get culture based on the amount of science that we produce. We have found a desert down here. Potential for a Petra city. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of scouting. A tribal village and a barb camp. That's actually a really great early game find. Let's grab that tribal village. It was a boost for sailing. That's quite nice because I don't see any coast anywhere nearby. So it's unlikely that we will get the sailing boost early into this game. And we can go ahead and hit this barb camp once and then we will heal up with our warrior. This is like the optimal path, in my opinion, to clearing a barb camp with a warrior before you have the discipline card. Hit it once, heal up, wait for the discipline card. That's the that's the uh, that's the route that I take. We've unlocked pottery, which is the first step towards unlocking the Seowon, which is a district that we want to rush. The perfect early game build order for Korea, in my opinion, is two scouts, 
into two settlers into um, three sale ones. That is the like, if you can pull that off, that is optimal. We're going to go ahead and grab Discipline to be able to kill Barbarians more easily. And we're going to grab God King to get our Pantheon. Pantheon, of course, giving you a potentially really powerful bonus throughout the game. We're going to attack one more time with our Warrior and then heal for another turn or two. Now that we have Code of Laws, we need to think about our next pathway. I usually like to go for colonization early so that we can transition into settler production after we have our Seowans up. So that's going to be the direction that I go. And I'm going to try to scout kind of radially here. So I'm going to scout to the south and then loop around. Some very nice mountains here. If I was playing another save that, you know, scaled off of mountains, that would be pretty good. But I don't really particularly care that much. I'm going to send this scout to the east because I want to know what's going on over here because I'm about to start producing my first settler and I want to know where that settler is going. I have 77 gold in the bank, two turns until the marble is gained. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the two food, two production tile because that is just a higher quality tile. Again, remember, it costs me two food to work every tile. So this tile costs two food and gains two food and gains one production, which means in actuality, this tile is only producing one production. This tile is producing two production, which means it's twice as good as this tile. So very, very important that you optimize uh, which tiles you're working very early into the game because it makes a very, very big difference, the relative amount of value. Um, so if something like this happens where a barb spawns in a camp that you're clearing and hopefully you kept your warrior's health high, just fortify on defensive terrain like a hill, take your licks, you have plus five combat strength. They'll have a hard time killing you. You should level up and you should um, be able to get the battle cry promotion, which will give you a chance to clear out the enemy units. All right, nice. The enemy spearman actually killed himself on me, which will give me an opportunity to take the battle cry promotion. And we can step onto this tribal village, getting the boost for craftsmanship. Not really the kind of boost I would look for early game. We don't actually care that much if barbs find our capital because we haven't actually built any infrastructure for that to matter. Now this barb camp was six tiles in range of our city, which means we get plus three error score for clearing it, which is always nice. You can do the counting one, two, three, four, five, six. And we got a nice chunk of gold as well out of that. We may want to consider buying an early builder after we research mining, we do have one, two really good quarry tiles and getting plus one production on both of those as well as the culture would be very nice. It would give us a very, very good early game surplus. We could alternatively consider buying another tile to get another plus one production. That's something that we can have a little think about. We don't have to make that decision right now. We have time. Looks like I'm seeing a lot of barbarian scouts on the map, which makes me feel like there's a lot of barb camps around. I switched away from researching riding because I had a feeling I might meet another player. So that's why I switched to mining. And now we have riding boosted so we can get sail wands whenever we need them. Um, I typically do like to get my monuments before I get my sail wands, but that is not something I super hardcore you know, kind of knock down the build on. We were the first to find Kagwana. That is a cultural city state. That's going to give us plus one culture per turn. They want me to kill another unit. I've already killed two barbs. If I kill another barb, I will get the boost for bronze working, which is to kill three barbarians. That would get me another envoy in here, which would put me one away from being suzerain, which would allow me to access their suzerain bonus, which is the ability to build baities, which are builders, which gives you plus one culture and plus one culture for every adjacent bonus resource and entertainment complex. Increase to plus two when exploration is discovered and it also provides tourism after flight. That might be worth it for me to build a couple of these around my empire in particularly rich locations. If I do a little bit of a search here for bonus resources, you can see, for example, there would be like a really interesting Beatty location right here. That's a plus four Beatty, potentially a plus eight. I'm thinking anything that would be, I think anything that's a plus three or better, these might be worth considering. Just you know, every now and again throughout my empire, like there could be one right here. You know, th this is like a little bit of extra culture that we can draw in uh, in our science game. And culture is an important yield when you're going for science. In fact, I think some players who are really good at the game, they argue that culture is more important than science, at least early in the game, which is kind of fun about Sejong because he gets a ton of culture from getting science early game. I could sell off my sugar, but I don't want to do that unless I'll be able to buy a builder with that. And I won't because it's only 26 gold, which is not worth it for me. All right, let's go ahead and kill this scout. That'll boost bronze working, getting me an envoy with Kagwana, bringing me up to two. And the boost for bronze working itself is just really handy to have. I will accept the Netherlands delegation because I want to have positive relations with them. And it will also theoretically later on in the game lead to us getting more Diplo favor. This scout has managed to level up. Let's go ahead and keep scouting around. I'm going to try and get him to loop back this way. And I need to start considering where my cities are going to go. Um, we do have, I feel like, an incredible Petra city here. I'm thinking like there might be a Seiya one on this tile and then there would be a mine, a mine, and a mine. The question is, where does the city itself go? Well, let's open up uh, control. Sorry, uh, I'm playing with some map 
lens mod. So if I press four and hold down control, it will actually show me the influence radius of a city. And I can then kind of think about where I might want to put a city. You can see the red tiles, uh, or sorry, the bright green tiles are things that have hills, I believe. A gray tiles are flat, purple are resources, and then red are unworkable tiles. So I think the best place to settle would be on this hill. If I were to get a Petra in the city, I would hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Petra hills. No, I tell a lie. That's 10 Petra hills. That's 11 Petra hills if I settle on this hill. So we're going to rush this city and try to get it developing. We're going to try to rush a granary in it rather than go for the sale one. And we're going to try to get both of these um, desert oases up and then some of these mines up. These uh, This will be this will be a significant downgrade in the quality of my empire to settle the city. But the long-term implications of having a city here that's relatively strong, ready to build a Petra could be quite handy. And so that's why I'm considering it as our first settle. When normally I would never settle the city, but the potential of uh, at 11, 12 hill Petra with Korea, no Ruhr Valley later in the game, which does kind of suck, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Do I optimize for the Seo one maximum value or yeah, I think I think I optimize for maximum Seo one value here in my capital because my capital is going to get a builder after it's two after it gets its settler and its Seo one and gets itself up and running and stuff like that. We're not too far from getting a builder. You head down this way. Go ahead and get that second settler. It's very, very important that you get the, that early three cities, right? There's writing. We can now go ahead, place the Seo one. The question is, do I want to buy the tile and place it now, or do I want to wait? I could buy it and place it now. I don't think it's actually that important this early. I think I would rather hold on, um, because I think it would be better if I could buy a builder and then maybe find something to sell. Yeah, if I buy a builder, if I could sell this to her for a little bit more money, I could buy the builder sooner and buy the tile. Yeah, so I'd rather buy the builder so that I can get these quarries online, because these quarries are, are actually really valuable, is the thing. They're just super, super valuable. I'm going to bring my warrior back now to defend my empire. My scouts are doing a good job exploring for me. Huge desert down here. Very exciting. I wish there was a river here because we could go for the Ruhr. Hmm. I don't love this horse, which is why I'm glad I'm bringing back my warrior to defend this. Grab this tribal village, plus one population in the capital. We're now pop capped in here. This is slightly unfortunate because I might be forced to buy a slinger which I'm going to do because that will get me a boost for archery and it does eventually lead to just having a better unit to defend your empire with. Yep, that does completely crush my early game gold plans. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Dude, I watched that one Bruce Almighty movie and now that the phrase the cookie crumbles has just been in my vocabulary ever since. I swear to God. We did find Mount Vesuvius. We're relatively low on the era score here, which is slightly unfortunate. I wish we were a bit further along towards a golden age. We haven't found that many people or hit that many natural wonders or, you know, continent splits and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and settle this city. Boom. There's early empire boosted. I will remember this. And speaking of early empire being boosted, we don't even have our pantheon yet. So we'll go for straight for state workforce. We do have a strong early game culture um, right now. We actually, yeah, we're on par scientifically and culturally with Wilhelmina. Did I forget to set this to deity? God almighty. No. Okay, let me, I'll load up, I'll load up the, uh, I'll load up the configuration that I had and we'll just, we'll just, we'll roll a new map. No, I forgot to change it to deity again. Oh God. Dude, I've got such a cool start too. God damn it. I'm going to get a really bad one now. I bet you. I bet you I'm going to get a bad one. I mean, of course. I mean, of course, right? We got the, we got a fairly scuffed start location. I mean, it's not bad, right? It's not terrible. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. You know, it's not a, it's not a punch in the mouth, but like, you know, it's not very good either. I'm allowed to be upset about it. A uh, couple of a couple of potential. I think I think we move to the pigs, or the fact that we move adjacent to the pigs. We don't move to the pigs. We move we move next to, next to pig. I think. Let's go say hi to the pig. Oink oink. Oh, we found another pig. Okay, that's good. We could be we could be we could be a pig friend. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to work the pigs. That's gonna be three gold per turn. Open up with the double scout. Man, that start location that we had though, it was so good. It was real real good. Weirdly enough, that Spearman decided to attack me. That's kind of uh, a little odd. Uh, I'm not going to love the amount of units that are going to spawn here. We have found Arabia already, which makes me deeply uncomfortable. I really don't want to be finding another player at this phase of the game. Um, I also don't like one, two, three, four, five, six, that he might contest me for this barb camp. Oh, can I clear this? Oh, man, we sniped him. We get the 30 gold and the clear and the three... Uh, Three era score that was actually based. Oh, and we found Russia. Okay, that's a little bit scary too. 
could exchange information on his capital. He's, not, he's kind of far away. Uh, let's go ahead and get the scouting information. I want to scout towards Arabia. I'll send you over here to clear this. The more information I know about where Arabia came from, the more information I'll know about how hard I have to forward settle him. So just send him that way. I don't like that he's sending units my way. Is he actually coming for me? Let me have a look. Uh, let's go ahead and get mining. It does look like he's coming for me, so we will go ahead and stop off for a slinger before we go exploring. We did spawn right next to Pantanel, though. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Opens up a lot of early game opportunities. Let's make sure we get a really good scout on Arabia. You're going to stand in this river chunk, because this means you're basically... This is like a wall. Rivers are like early game walls, right? They protect your units from attacks, especially, particularly melee attacks. Yep, like that. That's what we were expecting. Um, not a fan. Not a fan of the early war. Gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna step to here so that I get attacked by this warrior only and then I can promote. Yeah, you step that settler out of that city. Go go ahead. Make my day, pal. Step that settler. Oh, there's a, there's a big war going on. There's a three-way war. Uh, which means I just need to survive. If there's a, if there's a three-way giga war happening, I just need to stay alive. I don't like the idea of taking a double attack. If you fortify, is that enough to protect you? Let me think about this. It might not be. God, that's so much attack. I don't think you survive this unless I move you. If I move you to here, though, I think you do survive if this guy attacks you. So this is like a good bait to step this way. We do a little, we do a little, you know, a little tricking. A little tricking and changing and, and confusing people. Perfect. We run to the hills. We swing and a miss. We boom, boom, boom. Uh, now we just go to double settlers. I feel perfectly safe here. This guy's going to promote next turn. He'll fortify and promote. He'll be hard to kill. Oh, God, I want to steal the settler so bad. God, I want to steal that settler so bad. God, I'm going to steal the settler. Oh, it's my settler now. Oh, God. Why? This is chaos. <laughs> it's chaos on the dance floor, on the sieve floor. Fortify? Cancel the fortification. Take the promotion. You might still die. I think you live here. You've got double ideal terrain, and you're fortified. I think, I think you might live if he gets double attacked. Yeah, single attack, not enough. Perfect. Um, let's keep killing that slinger. Now you're double, double fortified and you're on double defensive terrain. So now I think you do potentially survive that. Now you run. We got the settler out of here. Dude, we just made out like a bandit. <laughs> we, I think we actually just like are criminals right now. Um, so he's got plus seven on the attack, which should mean we were fine to tank one more hit off him, I think. There's mining. Let's go for writing. I haven't even had a chance to plan my empire because this game just immediately erupted into chaos. I haven't even gotten any scouting done. Well, I mean, I got some scouting done, but I haven't even got, like, real, you know, scouting scouting done. Uh, you stay fortified there. This is, this is your, this is your fortress, keeping you safe. Grab that tribal. Oh, there's the Pantheon, so we can change our government here. Um, I might settle the honey. I think I will settle the honey. I could also forward settle Arabia right there. And that would be a very, I think I would rather settle the honey or maybe the cattle. Let's chase this guy down. I think we can catch him and kill him. Um... Oh, where do we settle this guy? Do we send him to the front? If I settle the honey... Do, 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 do. What if I settled adjacent to the honey? What if I settled above the honey? I actually think I might like above the honey better. Let's see if we can't have a little look around here. Maybe this is a better tile. We can always we can always come back. Remember, this settler was free, essentially. Now, in terms of pantheons, I do think Divine Spark is pretty good, right? Lots of great people points. Um... We don't need any adjacency bonuses. We're not planning on building holy sites. I don't think we have any marsh pastures, not really. Yeah, I think there's like some pretty good, like a free builder, that could be really good, but I'm kind of in the middle of a war. So I think I'm just going to take the um, Divine Spark as the, like the long-term return return on investment. Like a very simple, straightforward, I don't know what, what to pick Pantheon. All right, let's chase down this slinger. So I'll step forward. He might hit me once, but then I should be able to hit him back. My scout took a hit. I think this is actually a totally fine place to settle. And let me chase this guy down. And let me get this kill right here. Perfect. Okay, so the war has been diffused. Jeonju is working honey, which means it'll grow real quick. We go for the monument first. We check the north because there's sometimes stuff up here, you know. You never know. You never know what you'll find. A little loot box up in the north. All right, I know the damn barb just scouted my sieve, but there's nothing I can do about that. I think it would be good to forward settle, or at least prevent the settle on this location here. So if I were to settle on this cattle, I think that prevents Arabia from really settling towards me. It gives me a relatively good defensive line using these mountains and these lakes. So I'm going to go ahead and move my settler towards that cattle. Nice and safe location, which is, a you know, odd because, you know, it's adjacent to a volcano. You wouldn't necessarily consider, you know, a volcano to be somewhere that you would 
be, be safe in. Um, but it just turns out that in this circumstance, that uh, just so happens to be true, that that is what we are doing. No game modes in this game. Uh, fuck. Well, I mean, I stole a settler, so that doesn't really put me back that badly. But what is really important is that I get that settler back. Let me get a second warrior to make that a reality that I'll get that back. Um, we need to play this very carefully. I need to get my scout around to prevent the, uh, the guy from escaping. Let's grab animal husbandry, early empire. And yeah, I think things are going kind of okay here. Scout is around to intercept. Warrior steps one tile to the left, slinger forward, attacks, and boom. Okay, we got the settler back. Okay, that's a minor setback. Cost me a purchase. I'll buy a builder next. I think that's going to be the next purchase for us. More war. Yeah, that's, you know, this is, you know we're finding city-states through war. Mithla Cardiff. Pretty cool stuff. It's like what we, what we like to see. Um, unfortunately, the cattle was blown up, which sucks. Um, and this city is now minus two loyalty. We should be able to survive that. It's minus four loyalty. That's rough, but survivable. Provided we can um, get the growth in here. I'm going to steal this tile because it's actually a really good tile. Three food, one production. That'll get the city going. Um, hopefully the faster we get the higher population, the more loyalty defense we have. We will be going into a normal age, which means we won't have too much trouble with loyalty in the next era. I'd like to clear this. Let's clear this bad boy. Plus three era score and a bit of gold. Uh, we need to start thinking about where our Saya wands are going. So let's do a little bit of a search for hills. I'm not talking so much about like my strategy because I talked a lot in the uh, the failed game. The little, little, uh, the little false start that we had. Um, two really good Saya wands in here actually. If I were to go Saya wand and Saya wand, we got a ton of hillage out of that. Um, another really decent Saya wand over here. Looking good, looking good. Pretty okay, say one's over here. We need to think a little bit. It could be worth it to preserve this, like here, maybe. I don't know, could be. It might not be worth it, but it could be. So with writing, we want to avoid researching tech from the next era. So let's go ahead and fill out this era's tech tree. Now, Korea has a very unique way of engaging with the with the tech tree that I really like, or at least the Sejong's Korea does. Um, let's go ahead and see if these guys want a piece. I'm at the point now where like I don't really care for these wars to continue. I got what I wanted out of them, or I managed to defend myself from aggression. Like either you know, depending on which war you want to talk about, that was the outcome of the war. I either defended myself. Or I got what I wanted. Uh, hopefully those two guys are still bumping heads, which is just going to slow them down, which gives me plenty of time to catch up and actually potentially even get ahead. So we're actually going to get four cities here in the opening stages of the game, um, which is typically unheard of for me. We have 300 gold in the bank. I'm going to go ahead and buy a builder in Seoul. I'm also going to go ahead and buy the tile that we build the Seowon on. That will be a plus four Seowon. Very nice. We will quickly grab... Yeah, we're going to finish the Seowon. Yeah, we'll finish the say one. Yep, 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 yep. Go ahead and kill that. Clear the camp. We could send a settler over there and get plus three error score. And then I'm... Ooh. 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 If I, if I sent a settler to the east and then I cleared this barb camp, I could get plus three error score, plus four from the say one. I would be one error score away from a golden age. That is an interesting proposition. I'm going to go ahead and redirect for that goal. Also, look at all this delicious science here that's going to get converted into culture for us. Everything is kind of just working out for us, man. It's like, it's fantastic. Um, we don't want to clear that. He should retreat. You're moving east. All right, we just need to find another player or something. Just one error score, either a continent, another player, literally anything for plus one error score. Tribal village will do. Um, shoot. Come on, give me, give me literally anything. 13 turns for loyalty in here. Oof. Um, let's quickly grab Magnus and put him into Guanju. That'll preserve loyalty. Plus four error score from the Seowon. Where are we settling the city? It's going to be based on hills again. Um, yeah, here. Pretty good. So, I don't know. Settle right here. Seowon right there. Two hills plus three farms potentially. A little bit of gold trickle. Yeah, 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 Thundra? Tundra, not Thundra. Was it not? Same thing. Let's get our monuments up. We've got monuments flying up in here. Um, you're going to go ahead. Oh god, the builder map mode. I really don't like the builder lens. It's cool. I mean, I get it. Uh, can I sell stuff for gold here? What if I were to go for sailing and I bought a boat? Which means I'm going to improve luxuries. Not just any, any era score whatsoever. Literally one era score. It's all I need. Ooh, settling on Tundra is error score, I think. Right? 
Air Tracker, Repeatable, Tundra City. Yes. So if I settled on a Tundra City, then cleared this barb camp, that is a Golden Age secured. If I search for hills, it's like a decent number of hills up here. The city itself is a lot worse if I move just one tile. It gets okay if I move a few tiles. I'm going to delay settling that city because it's a fourth city anyway. I would rather settle it in its current location, but we're going to try to make something work out of that. Let's get this camp online. We can immediately sell that luxury. And now we can, now we can buy the galley. Okay, yeah. So we can buy the galley, which means we're going to settle in place because I prefer this city anyway. Plus three error score. Oh, never mind. Uh, we did it. We don't need to buy the galley. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Yeah, awesome. Monuments. Let's go. Ah, uh, that was huge. We just got a golden age, which means when we actually do build our sail wands, we'll be able to convert our, our you know, we'll get even more uh, culture. Oh, you're really nice. Real nice. So I suppose with that 300 gold in the bank, let's focus on food and production. Ideally on production in here. I want to do a little bit of micro in here. I don't care about that plus one science right now. Um, it would actually be really good to get that horse tile. Now that I think about it, that's a really nice horse tile. Um, any really nice tiles hanging around the edge of my empire? Uh, not really. Not really. We could buy another builder. I think that would be something worth doing. Would increase our gold per turn. We're already getting like a sick amount of gold. Let's get that builder. We got a couple of luxuries we can get online. The extra luxuries will help with loyalty. I'll be able to move Magna somewhere, maybe into my capital to actually do some real chopping here. Uh, let's talk to Russia and buy his open borders. 13 gold. We should now be able to explore his territory. We've managed to get through Arabia. I don't like it. If, he's, if he sends this north, I'll be, you know... A little, uh, a little peeved because I, I redirected from that northern city. And I would like to grab those two cottons there. They are on a different continent, which is kind of important. If I could, if I could yoink those, it would be huge. If I can't, I'll be sad. Do I chop here? If I chop, I could start the sail one a few turns sooner, or I could have the luxury. I think I'm gonna chop. I'm gonna chop. Get that sail one real fast. Four turns on it. I'm going to pop a mine right there, boom, to give this city an actual... Oh, I didn't mean to make error score, whoops. So now all the tiles are producing production, so now I don't feel so bad about this city. But then I'll, I'll get the luxuries up. Um, yeah, feeling super good about the position right now. Like, we're up to 13 science per turn, we're making 6 culture. Um, that's going to get better as our monuments actually start finishing. We're up to 4 cities in the ancient era, which is almost unheard of. We can go ahead and plug in urban planning now, we don't need God King anymore. Probably should keep discipline. Might want to get maybe 2 more archers. Let's get the camp, because we actually sold away our honey, so now we have plus one luxury. And we want to avoid researching tech. Let's go ahead and get astrology, boom, boom, boom. Just fill out all this era's tech. We want to delay the culture boost from our science as long as possible. It's a, it's a really interestingly balanced mechanic, because the more science you make, the faster you trigger the boost, which means the less culture that you make. But the less science that you make, the more time you have to build up your science, which means the more culture you get. So it kind of actually has like a, a self inhibitor in it, which is a, a really interesting thing like to, to, to have balance wise. Uh, let's go get that amber online. I need a lot of builders. All right, we got the monument in the capital. We definitely want to get the library. Plus two science per turn is huge. The sale one. I mean, we would love to get a builder in here, but I think we get these libraries up real fast. We can get Hypatia or let's see, have a look. Um, if we take a look at the scientific people, yeah, it looks like none of the scientific people have gone. Rush is about to... no. Someone else is going to get one. But yeah, we want to we start triggering those and, and collecting up those great people. It's going to be an important part of our plan. Plus, I believe we went for the um, Divine Spark, which means we benefit more from having campuses with libraries in them. Let's take Penbrush and Voice. This gives each city plus one culture for each specialty district. This is a nice little cultural boost in a game that we're already having a really good cultural boost. We don't really have the faith economy to make monumentality work and we didn't rush commercial hubs so I would rather go Penbrush and Voice with that little bit of passive uh, a little bit of passive culture um, which is going to keep us keep us churning along very nicely. Got to start that churn counter nice and early if I'm already saying the word churn on the first episode. <laughs> Let's move this guy over here, become an archer, and we'll move him up over here to start clearing out this barb camp. It would be nice to just get rid of a few of them for the benefits that you get from doing so. We definitely need more builders. It's going to be like libraries into like two to three, maybe like a builder or two per city, something like that to get these tiles adjacent to the sale ones improved. It's like really, really important tempo-wise. There is the wheel, giving us our section second luxury, which should bring us up the neutral amenities, which means this city now has positive 10 loyalty. We can move Magnus to the capital, and now we're set up to potentially chop out more settlers, potentially chop out more builders. Um, the only thing we need to do is try to find like a little bit more cash or something. 
maybe it would be better if we just started a builder in here right now because then we could just chop our way through all this infrastructure. Look at all these chops are in here. We got stone, we got wood, we got stone, wood, 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 wood. Yeah, there's a huge potential for chopping in the capital. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. A little bit of a false start here, but we have found ourselves to be in a very interesting position. A little bit of chaos, a little bit of fun. Two very strong civs here competing with us. But we are managing to hold our own thanks to an early settler's deal. I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>